Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy CJ Beasley here back again. Today we have yet another battle video from the UW or UBLN, excuse me. Um, this week we are taking on Mario B, coach of the Happy Valley Harry Hariyamas, I believe that's what they're called. Um, if you guys don't know him, definitely go check him out. I'll definitely link his uh, channel down in the description below. He is a really good battler. Um, I've known him through the uh, UBLN. He's a really good guy, so definitely go check him out. Uh, so anyways, guys, so let's talk about last week. So last week, if you didn't already go see it, um, definitely go check that out. But I'm going to spoil it right here. So three, two, one. We took a big... 5-0 victory, I believe it was, 4 victory, something like that, uh, but either way, we took a really big victory, um, sitting pretty at 2-0 with a plus 8 differential, I believe, so I guess it was a plus, it was a 3-0 victory, but anyways, um, so we're sitting pretty at 2-0, uh, looking good, hopefully we can snag our third win of the season here, so looking at his team, he has Tornadus T, uh, Florges, Incineroar, Snorlax, Gligar, Raichu, Alola, uh, Fortress, Serena, Rotom Wash, Gudra, and Mega Gallade. Uh, so things I noticed is that my Mega Lopunny outspeeds his entire team, outside of Scarfers, obviously. And he really doesn't have the best switch-ins to it. Um, best switch-in would be something like, you know, the a, uh, physically defensive Rotom Wash, maybe. Or even, like, a Gudra, something like that. Or even a Gligar, but really those things don't really even want to take hits from it even an incineroar with intimidate uh doesn't want to take a high jump kick so uh definitely definitely gonna uh, build around the mega low penny this week uh other things i noticed is i really don't have the best tornado switch-ins which is a problem so we're gonna have to find a way to patch that up and another thing i noticed is that mega Gallade. uh i don't really have the best switch-ins to that thing either so i will have to patch that up as well so uh let's just hop right into the team so the first thing I'm bringing is Ord, the Drodagon with Leftovers Rough Skin, uh, Dragon Tail, Gunk Shot, Stealth Rocks, and Glare. Uh, with max HP, max special defense, and 4 attack with a careful nature. Uh, this is my primary switch in to the, um, to the Tornadus, as well as it can switch in to the Snorlax and just kind of take hits and Dragon Tail it out if it's trying to uh, set up on me, something like that. Um, so we have the Dragon Tail here, obviously for phasing, and with the Gunk Shot, unless if he's like max HP, max defense, uh, Florges, it will be two shotting him always. Uh, and the Stealth Rocks are here just because um, I didn't really want to fit him on anything else, even though I have all three of my Stealth Rockers this week. I thought this was the best thing to put him on. And then Glare's obviously there to cripple things like the uh, Mega Gallade, something like that, or even the Tornadus, just to slow that thing down and just kind of cripple it. Um, so like I said, this is a really good offensive switch in to the Tornadus. It can take hits from Snorlax if need be and uh, phase that thing out so it doesn't sweep me. And it's just a really good mod in this matchup uh, just overall. And he doesn't really have great switch ins to it either. So Next up, we got Jessica, the Lopunny, with the Lopunite Limber, uh, with the Return, High Jump Kick, Fake Out, and Ice Punch with 52 HP. Uh, max attack with an adamant nature, 4 defense, 12 special defense, and 188 speed. Um, so you'll notice that this actually doesn't outspeed the Tornadus, a max speed Tornadus. And you're probably thinking, like, why Why is that? Um, and I'll tell you. So the reason, the reason being is basically um, I don't expect Tornadus to be anything but Choice Scarf this week. Or um, either that or a bulky set, which either way... Um, if he's Choice Scarf, then obviously I want to speed, and if he's bulky, I'll outspeed anyways. So um, I didn't really, I didn't really think it was valuable to outspeed a max speed, um, you know, Tornadus. So I went with this set instead. Um, it can, it can kind of take hits. It can take an Air Slash, I believe, from a Tornadus, if I remember correctly. Um, and it has enough out speed. Um, excuse me, it has enough speed to outspeed the Mega Gallade. So uh, I thought that was probably the best benchmark to hit. Um, with the return high jump kick pretty much running through his entire team um, with uh, the fake out and ice punch in addition to that just uh, the fake out is basically there for just general chip and then the ice punch is obviously there for the uh, for the Gligar and I obviously don't have fire punch which fire punch may be better than fake out this week we'll have to see but um, you know uh, the fortress doesn't want to take two high jump kicks either way so it's really not that big of a deal 
Um, so yeah, so this is kind of my wall breaker. It kind of, the longer I can keep this thing along, excuse me, the longer I can keep this thing alive, the more it pressures this entire team. So, uh, you know, I'm really just playing around this uh, low punny this week as he doesn't really have the best answers to it. So next up, we got Milan Pai, the club key, with the light clay, prankster, uh, play rough, reflect, light screen, and the toxic. With uh, 228 HP, 180 defense with an impish nature, and 100 speed, or excuse me, 100 special defense. Um, so what this allows me to do is take two drain punches from a Mega Gallade and set up a reflect. It also can take um, two close combats. Um, and it can uh, just like play rough, it can toxic things. Um, his, his primary switch into this thing would be like some like Snorlax or the Floridus or something like that. Well, I guess not Floridus as much, but primarily Snorlax, something like that. So I can just throw off a toxic and slowly start to whittle that thing down. And then the player reps obviously there just for uh, general damage. It hits the Gudra, it hits the Mega Delay, stuff like that. So uh, this thing is my primary switch into the Mega Delay. Like I said, I don't really have the best switches to that. So if I can get this thing in, start setting up screens, and just kind of slow the entire game down, uh, I'll be happy with that. So uh, next up, we got Cousin It, the Tangrowth, with the Leftovers Regenerator, Power Whip, Knockoff, Synthesis, and Sleep Powder. With max HP, 52 attack, uh, 76 defense with an impish nature, 124 special defense, and 4 speed. Um, so what this allows me to do is... Uh, it basically allows me to um, let me go back. Uh, it basically allows me to one v one things like uh, the Rotom, like um, the Raichu, unless if he's a nasty plot Raichu, like the Gligar. This thing walls the Gligar. It also walls the Fortress stuff like that. Even the Serena doesn't uh, deal much to this thing. So this is generally just a, a physical wall. And it also can take hits from the Mega Glade reasonably well. So that's basically what the bulk's for, just taking hits. Um, I can't remember exactly what this does. I believe it takes three Psychics, or I, it's a three-hit KO from Psychic on a Lowland Raichu. It can take close combats or poison jabs uh, and stuff like that. So um, the coverage power whip um, with this much attack investment, I believe two hit KOs, a non-physically bulky. Floor just like a 252 four set, I believe a two hit KOs with power whip, which is really nice. Knockoff is just generally to get rid of items. Um, also, uh, if you bring Sap Sip or Gudra, I don't have to uh, give that thing three plus one attack. And then Synthesis is obviously there for longevity, and then the Sleep Powder is to catch like something like a uh, Tornadus on the switch end and just put that thing to sleep. It also is good against the Rotom uh, and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, so this is a really good uh, physical wall. Um, it also can take some uh, special hits. So I'm uh, really excited to see how this set does. Uh, and next up, we got Mighty Mouse the Mew uh, with the Culver Berries, uh, Synchronize, Psy Shock, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Nasty Plot. With the 20 HP, 4 Defense, 4 Special Defense, Max Special Attack, and 228 Speed with a Timid Nature. So this outspeeds a Adamant uh, Mega Glade, which was the fastest thing I thought I needed to outspeed this week. Um, with a Nasty Plot up, this pretty much run through, runs through his entire team with Chip. Um, so if I can get Chip on stuff like um, the Mega Glade, if I can get Chip on the Forges, if I can get uh, Chip on you know, the Gudra, um, if I can get Chip on the Rotom, this kind of just uh, runs through his team. The Culver Berry is obviously there to take a knockoff from something like a Tornadus or a Mega Gallade. It just kind of destroyed those things. So, uh, yeah, so this set's going to be really good this week. I hope it puts in work. I expect it to put in work. It's going to, uh, it just looks really good on paper, at least against this team. Side Shock, Earth Power, and Ice Beam hits everything at least neutrally, if not super effectively. Most things super effectively. But, uh, and then the Nasty Paws obviously, obviously there to get up to plus two and more potentially. So, uh, yeah. So this set, I expect to put in a lot of work, like I said. It's a really good, uh, just kind of early game wall breaker. It can also be a late game sweeper. Same with the Mega Lopunny. Uh, so finally, we got LeBron James, our Nidoking, King, with the Choice Scarf, uh, Sheer Force with the Poison Jab, Earthquake, Ice Beam, and Superpower. With uh, 204 attack with a Lonely Nature, 124 special attack, and 180 speed. So what this allows me at out speed is um, a max speed Tornadus, I believe. 
just so I had something to outspeed that in case um, that was the case. Um, Poison Jab, Earthquake, uh, Super Power, and Ice Beam kind of just run through his team. Uh, I went with Ice Beam over Ice Punch just so I could hit the Tornadus a little bit harder and the excuse me, the Gligar and the Gudra. Not, I guess the Gudra doesn't hit Gudra harder, but uh, it can hit the uh, primarily Gligar and the Tornadus a little bit harder depending what their sets are. So I thought that was valuable, so I went with the mix set this week. Um, this can 2 hit KO a Snorlax with super power as long as he's not super physically bulky. Um, it can also um, 2 hit KO moves things with Poison Jab as long as they don't resist it. And then Earthquake does the rest that resists Earthquake, or excuse me, that resists uh, Poison Jab. So stuff like Incineroar can't take an Earthquake, but can take Poison Jab, but doesn't take it well. Uh, the Gudra uh, doesn't like taking hits from this either, stuff like that. So uh, I thought this set was going to be a really great wall breaker. Uh, I kind of, I don't think I want to lead with that. I think the lead is going to be Dredagon. But, um, you know, I think this thing is going to put in work as well as the Mew. Um, it's not really going to win me the game, I don't think. But I think it can uh, at least put in some good work and just get some nice KOs. Just add to its uh, kill put it higher on the kill leaderboard so uh anyways guys i'm gonna stop talking um the team matchup i think is gonna be really good this week to be honest uh, i think we have a favorable matchup outside of like tornadas and mega glade so anyways guys uh, i'm gonna stop talking like i said and we'll just hop right into the battle video now all right guys so we're back so looking at the team he brought he brought the mega glade the tornadas the snorlax incineroar the gudra and the fortress so nothing too surprising here. That's pretty much the six I thought he'd bring. Um, Fortress and Gligar were kind of ir uh, interchangeable. Raichu kind of had a good matchup here, so I maybe thought we would see that, um, but not too upset that we didn't. So uh, here, just looking at his team, I expect either the Tornadus or the Mega Gallade to lead. Um, I do. Ex uh, so based off that, I kind of want to just get a glare off early and just uh, paralyze something. Um, and mind you, we were playing this game super late. Like, I'm not going to make an excuse because it was late his time too. We were kind of playing this game super late, so I was kind of playing sloppy. Not, I'm not going to lie. But uh, we're going to leave the Dreadagon here. I uh, just wanted to glare something, uh, get something paralyzed, um, and we're going to see what he wants to lead. Like I said, he's most likely going to either lead the Mega Glade or the Tornadus, just looking at my matchup versus him. Um, so I'm going to lead with my Ord, the Dreadagon as he does lead his Mega Glade. So here, I'm like, he's most likely gonna go Snorlax, but if he doesn't, and I just set up rocks, um, you know, that kind of puts me, like, kind of behind. Um, so I will click the Glare as he does go Snorlax. I'm like, dang, man, I really wish I didn't Glare there because uh, Toxic would have been better on this thing. But it's not that big of a deal. So we do paralyze the Snorlax. Uh, we do set up the Stealth Rocks, uh, and here, he uh, gets fully, or he bat body slams first, trying to pick up a paralysis or something, just kind of gauging damage, I guess. Uh, so he, he does take some rocky, or rough skin, excuse me. And from based off that damage, we know that he is not physically invested at all, which was good to know. And we do see the leftover, so I do expect this to be cursed out at this point with body slam, curse, um, maybe EQ, um, something like that. So we do go out into our cousin It, the Tingrith. Uh, as he does get fully paralyzed, so I'm not 100% sure that he's a curse set yet, but um, you know, I'm still try just kind of trying to scout out for that. And so here I click Sleep Powder, kind of expecting him to switch out, but he doesn't. He just goes for the curse up in my face, um, which was fine. Uh, so he does get the curse up, and I'm like, crap, okay, I need to. I need to go into my Klefki at this point and set up a Reflect so he's not just sweeping through my team. So that's why I'm going to, or I go for the knockoff first, excuse me. So I'm going to knock off, uh, hope he gets fully paralyzed, he doesn't, so he gets another curse up. And so here, um, a body slam obviously doesn't kill my club key as I do resist it. Uh, if he protects with an earthquake, good on him, but I don't think he would. Um, he could go for a fire punch, but uh, I don't really expect him to have fire punch. Um, so I'm actually just going to go on my Dreadagon hard, as he does go for the body slam. And... At this point, um, I died to. I knew I would let that hit, but I died to another one. So I, I needed him to either get fully paralyzed that turn or the turn or this next upcoming turn. 
and I would be able to dragon tail it out, but that's not the case. Um, so he's just gonna get by some off, get a free KO on my Dragon, but I'm slowly shipping away with the rough skin, which is not that big of a deal. So here I'm kind of panicking, uh, just kind of looking what I can do, and I see that the high jump kick um, after a fake out will Oko this Snorlax, so I do go for that. So I'm just gonna click the fake out here. As he does just go back on to his Mega Gallade. And so he's going to take a little bit of rock damage. I'm going to Mega Up. And uh, we're just going to go for the Fake Out here. As, like I said, a Fake Out plus a High Jump Kick KO the Snorlax 100% of the time. So I'm just going to click the Fake Out. Kind of gauge off this damage, how much of that is doing. And it we see it does about 20%. So I know this thing is bulky. Um, it seems like his Mega Lopunny check at this point. So I'm just going to go on my Club Key as I don't expect him to be too offensive. So he's just gonna mega up himself. Um, the worst thing he could go for is like a close combat, but I can eat one of those. So I'm just gonna go hard clef key, as he does just click drain punch. And so based off this calc right here, um, I do realize that he is most likely adamant with some physical attack investment, but not, uh, he seems about max attack, but I know he's bulky, so he seems about adamant, not jolly, which is good to know. Um, as he does just go into Snorlax, and here I'm just going to cl click the free reflect. Um, nothing really else I could do there. Um, not really a better play than that. So here I'm just going to switch out. I believe I go hard into my Mega Low Bunny, as Bison doesn't do that much, and Paralysis is only 30% chance. So I did not think I would worry too much about that, as um, he pro most likely didn't click Body Slam on the Club Key, anyways. So here he just goes for the rest, so I'm like, okay, this thing is Body Slam, Rest, Curse, most likely Sleep Talk. So that's good to know, as my Club Key does kind of handle this to level. So he's just going to switch out here, as I go for the High Jump Kick, just to Oko that Snorlax if he decides to stay in, as he does take a little bit of rocks, and, um, or excuse me, I go for the Return here. And so based off that Return, we see it's a crit, but uh, let me pause it. So him and I were talking after... And from the rage he was in, um, two returns was most likely going to KO him anyways. He did, we did get the crit, which was unfortunate for him, obviously. But um, we were talking after, and based off of his bulk, you know, the crit really didn't matter that much. Besides the fact that, like, how much he wanted to preserve this thing anyways. So, uh, we did get the crit, and then we're just going to go for another return, take this thing out. Uh, I almost went for the high jump kick there in case he wanted to switch out, but I just thought return was fine. Um, so he's going to go into El, Dig uh, El Diggy, and here I know I'm going to break the Sturdy, and I can go uh, for two high jump kicks, unless if he's like super, super bulky physically, um, it will 2 hit KO, and we see based off that damage that this will 2 hit KO, which is perfect, as it does about 50%, and he does just set up his rocks, which is fine. Uh, I don't have a Defogger this week or a Rapid Spinner, but um, they don't really hurt that my, my team that bad anyways. So I will just go for the high jump kick here, take this thing out. And so here I expect him to go into his Tornadus if it was Scarf, but he doesn't. He goes into his uh, Incineroar, which I thought was pretty surprising. So at this point, I don't expect his uh, Tornadus to be Scarfed at all. I just expect a max speed, which was kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, so he does go uh, for the Fake Out as he does flinch my Megalopony, and we do see that he was Intimidate. Uh, so here I'm just going to go for the High Jump Kick, even if he doubles out into Tornadus, which I thought was a possibility. He'll be down to about 50%, which I thought was fine. So here I'm just going to go for the high jump kick. And like I said, it does bring him uh, about 40% based off that damage. And there, my reflect is gone. So here I'm just going to switch out. Uh, just go hard into my Nato King, LeBron James. Uh, worst thing he could do is knock off, but I don't think he'd knock off on a Mega Low Punny. So uh, here he's actually going to double out into his Incineroar, which I have expected. Um, he either uh, went for a hurricane, which I could eat, or he doubled out into his Incineroar, and so that's why I went into this instead of like something like Mew. Um, so he will click the fake out here, and here I'm just going for the poison jab. There's not much he can touch me with on this Incineroar. He doesn't really get the best coverage, so I'm just going to click the poison jab to deal big damage to something. As he does go on to his Gudra, I almost clicked the Ice Beam. I om I was so close to clicking the Ice Beam. Um, so here, I'm going to get the poison jab off, and we see it does just under half, so I know I'm not going to stay in. I don't want to lose this thing just just quite yet. I do expect him to go for an, either an Ice Beam or a Surf, but I thought my Tangerith was a nice pivot, 
um, just some, force him to go for like a fire type attack or something like that or an ice beam again as he does just go for the ice beam and so we do see he's an ice beam so he's most likely going to click it again he most likely doesn't have a fire type attack if he has ice beam which just covers my Nidoking king and my uh my uh King Earth. So here, I expect him to just Ice Beam again. If he clicks Fire Blast, there, good play, but I didn't expect him to, as he does just go for an Ice Beam again. So here, I'm like, this is a free turn just to click a screen, and I do believe I go for the Light Screen first. Um, so, yeah. So he's going to go on to the Snorlax, which I thought was 100% okay. He does take a little bit of Rock damage, and I do go for the Light Screen first. And then this upcoming turn, I believe I go for the Reflect, just to get my screens up. Yep, I go for the Reflect here, and I expect to see either um, just him stay asleep for this turn, or he does go for this uh, Sleep Talk, either way it makes sense to me, as we do see the Sleep Talk, so he is Sleep Talk Rest, or uh, uh, Rest Talk set with the Body Slam and the Curse, and he does unfortunately get Rest again, which wasn't that big of a deal, um, even if he got a Curse, my low Punny could still come in and just kind of pressure this thing, and so I'm just going to go hard low Punny here. As I don't really want to stay in, I don't really have really uh, any mons with pivot on him, so I just kind of have to go hard into this. As he does go for the sleep talk, and I believe he gets a body slam here. No, he gets a curse, which was 100% uh, fine. As I can just go for, I believe I go for just hard high jump kick here, um, and just try to claim something else. So I'm just gonna click the high jump kick, and he does, in fact, give me this Snorlax. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't. I'm sorry. He lives on a sliver of health. That was a damage roll. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal, though. He does go for the buy slam, and unfortunately, he does get the paralysis. And so I'm like, crap, okay. Um, this thing still does obviously have uh, value. It does have value to me. Um, but, you know, it's not it's not crazy valuable anymore. And so I'm just going to click the return here. I know it will get basically whatever he wants to go into. Um, so I'm just going to click the return. Hopefully, I don't get fully paralyzed, which I don't. So I'm going to claim this Incineroar. And at this point, he is pretty much forced to go out into his uh, Tornadus, which he does. And so at this point, um, I do want to preserve this Megalopony, one for differential, um, and two just for uh, potential late game, like against the Yudra and the Snorlax, as I will still have both those. And so here, I'm just going to go hard into my Clef Key, and I know I can take a Hurricane behind the Reflect, or the Light Screen, excuse me. So he does just click the uh, hurricane, which I thought was fine. And so here, I believe I just clicked toxic, if I'm not mistaken. No, I clicked the play rough, because nothing he wanted. Uh, yeah, yeah, I clicked the play rough here. Um, and as my rocks actually do KO him, so that's actually a kill for Dredagon, as it is already dead, but that's still KO for it. And so here he's going to go into his Gudra, and I'm doing the Calyx, and even if he's uh, physically bulky, as long as he's not super physically bulky, I'll KO him with this. And I'm, I wasn't 100% sure if I would outspeed, but uh, here I'm just going to click it. And we do outspeed and we do KO him with this. So that was a free KO, which I was really happy about. And so here, I'm kind of, at this point, I'm just kind of playing sloppy. Um, I'm just trying to preserve differential as much as I can. So I could go for the light screen first, as I know I can live a hurricane behind a light screen. As he does go for the hurricane. And um, so at this point, I'm like, okay, I want to preserve differential as much as I can. Um, so I'm going to switch this thing out hard, set him to go for another hurricane. As I do just go out into my LeBron James, the uh, Tornadus. And so he's actually going to click the knockoff, which is a really good play. As it does get rid of my Choice Scarf. And at this point, I can't live a hurricane through the light screen. Um, but he actually has a Psychic, which is fine. So I believe we've seen this whole set. So Psychic, Hurricane, Knockoff, and does he have a U-turn? I don't know. I don't know if we saw this whole set, actually. But either way, at this point, I do have to sack my uh, Noodle King. I probably should have sacked the Clef Key just for differential. But at this point, I can just go freely out into my Mew. I know I can live whatever he wants to go for, as I do have the Culver Berry, and just click Ice Beam to win the game. So uh, good game to my opponent, Mario B. Really fought, well fought battle, dude. Um, really glad we got a battle, especially since we're both uploaders. Um, like I said, I'll leave his link down in the description below. Definitely go check him out. Um, he should be posting his side of the battle, so definitely go watch that. Um, and anyways, guys, we picked up this clean, I believe it was a 4-0 victory. So now we are sitting at 3-0 with a plus 12 differential, which is really good. So anyways, guys, um, I'm going to stop talking. Uh, leave a comment down below on the video. 
hit the subscribe button, uh, ring that bell notification, I guess, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.